successful conduct of G20 in Srinagar is a testimony to the competence and professionalism of our soldiers. Lieutenant General Amardeep Singh, Aujla, Chinar Corps Commander, has always been a silent soldier with his actions speaking louder than words. As a brigade and Duke Commander, along the line of control, numerous operations were done under his leadership, leading to extreme control along the line of control. He led personally rescue operations during Amarnath cloud burst and has contributed to the peace and tranquility in the valley. Thank you so much for talking to Republic, sir. It's Thank an honor so to have you. Thank you. Sir, uh, Foreign Minister of Pakistan, Bilawal Zardari Bhatto, issued a threat that it will disturb G20 in Srinagar. How would you respond to the exporters of terror after the successful meeting in Srinagar? I think uh, the actions on ground and uh, the smooth conduct of the G20 meeting per se is enough to convey what we actually wanted to convey. So it is a loud and a very clear message to the, uh, not only to the ones who had, uh, you know, given this threat, but to the entire world that this is where we stand. And today this is what the situation on ground uh, is, that we are capable and uh, whatever we've decided for ourselves, we leave no stone unturned to ensure that it goes through in the rightful kind of a manner. And it is not uh, that uh, uh, a single agency which has uh, you know, come into play. It is a combined effort of everyone who is part and parcel of the daily uh, dynamics of uh, Kashmir. So I think it's a wonderful example of collective uh, effort that has been shown to the entire world and we are proud of it. Sir, you have said about the increase of Afghan terrorist as anticipation was not observed. So what made you to say that? And do you bl believe that the cash-stripped Pakistan is not able to afford the Afghani terrorist or there is a fallout between them or this is a shift in the policy now? Uh, initially, uh, there were apprehensions when uh, you know Taliban 2.0 came uh, at Kabul. But uh, the manifestation, uh, like I've said before, never took place. And I'm uh, very confident that uh, a lot of credit goes to the Indian diplomacy. You know, the way the country has emerged and uh, can control the global affairs, I think uh, is a testimony of uh, where we are and uh, what we can mm -hmm. achieve. And uh, that has been one singular reason and apart from that, uh, I think our robustness along the line of control, uh, the infiltration part, uh, as you're all aware, has been, uh, you know, at its very lowest. So even if some attempts were made, which uh, I'm not too sure about, but uh, we've not let anybody, you know, come inside uh, uh, this side. And so there are no signatures to suggest, there are no uh, visibility per se. And uh, overall, I think uh, we've been able to manage the situation uh, uh, pretty comfortably well. So how do you view the present situation of Pakistan? Um, turmoil is immense. You see the crisis which is uh, uh, emanating uh, within the country in every form, uh, in every uh, domain. You know, it is an economic uh, crisis, there's energy crisis, there's uh, so much of uh, infighting between various uh, factions politically, between the political masters and the military hierarchy. There is terrorism which is there, there is unemployment, there is inflation. Uh, you name a thing and possibly, yeah, that is where uh, Pakistan is uh, today engaged in. So what is more important for them is to actually look inside uh, rather than, you know, looking at uh, Kashmir. Uh, Kashmir was never, never this and it will never be this. It is very much us, and we'll ensure that it uh, uh, remains with us. And that is where the sentiments of the local population today are aligned with us. Yeah. You know, the shift that we've seen over the last three, three and a half years since August of 2019, it's an ample example that nobody wants to side with the, uh, the Western adversary, so as to say, or uh, Pakistan. And they are very well aligned with uh, the Indian democracy. And uh, it is just a matter of time that even those, you know, radical thoughts and ideas uh, will slowly get subsumed into the nationalism of uh, the Indian country. 
Sir, uh, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh made a statement about taking pa uh, POK and on 21st of November, if I clearly remember last year, you made a statement that the army is completely prepared. So would you like to share about the preparedness of army and as the GOC of 15 core, what are the operational concerns that concerns you when it comes taking over POK? Uh, the question per se, I'll just leave it at uh, the point that uh, when it comes to the operational preparedness and the readiness, um, everyone should count on uh, Indian Army. We are there. What, when, where and in what capacity, I think uh, only time will tell. Sir, you talked about that uh, peace is returning to Kashmir. Uh, yes, there is no doubt about it because we are seeing the uh, voices that have been silent for a long time. Now they are talking about their nexism, terrorism, how uh, the support structure and other things. How do you see this change in the Kashmir Valley? Uh, it's a very positive change that I must uh, put across and uh, we are pretty confident that in the times to come uh, this positivity will further increase uh, in its dimension. A uh, lot of ground still needs to be covered. And there are a lot of aspects where uh, we have to uh, deliver and deliver uh, collectively and that's where we are presently engaged uh, both at the national level and at the UT administration level that those chinks, those corners mm. which need to be smoothened out that's where the current focus is, that is where the current uh, impetus is and uh, the belief and uh, the thought process like I mentioned earlier has automatically you know, seen a positive kind of a surge uh, over the last three, three and a half years and slowly, slowly this drift is what is manifesting in, into a very, very uh, dynamic but a very positive a kind of uh, environment that uh, is emanating out of the Kashmir. So the population today, you know, is uh, drifting away from the terrorism part. The radicalization, of course, mother, while a lot of endeavors are being put in, but uh, it's a very gradual and a slow process, but we are seeing it, uh, you know, uh, coming down a certain uh, bit. But uh, again, uh, you know, a lot of effort uh, needs to be uh, put in. So at the end of the day, when I look at uh, things as to what augurs well uh, for the Kashmiri society in the times to come, I am pretty optimistic that uh, things are moving in the right direction. It's uh, how we can you know, sustain and pursue collectively mm -hmm. uh, in ensuring that uh, whatever is uh, the aim and the objective, we achieve that uh, in a matter of time. So that is what is to be seen. Sir, you talked about the ideological change. Is there really a ideological change in terrorist ideologies now? Because if we take the recent incidents of the non-local losing his life in an Atnag attack, and what does the change in the profile of a terrorist target imply to army in particular and security forces in general? Okay. So when you have uh, you know such kind of an incident taking place. Uh, it uh, just shows sheer kind of a frustration on their part. You know, picking up a non-local, picking up a poor guy from the streets and uh, causing harm to him, uh, touching base or touching, yeah. uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, killing of a soft target like this, it, uh, it, it, it is actually a clear depiction of cowardice on the part of uh, the uh, terrorists or the militant ranks. When you are unable to do a particular thing, just to, you know, put pressure on the governance, just to put pressure on the security forces, this is what they have now started or this is, uh, this is where, you know, the uh, culmination of this has uh, come to. So, for me individually, uh, as a military commander, yeah. When you see this invisible kind of a terrorism which is uh, taking shape and in terms of you know, targeting uh, such uh, a soft kind of uh, people on the streets, it uh, definitely is a cause of concern and that is where our, uh, uh, at this point of time, uh, if I have to put it across, we are focused that we are able to you know, pick out these, we are able to weed out these and we get to know at the earliest and thereafter we eliminate uh, such kind of uh, people who are indulging in such activities as also such kind of activities uh, from uh, within the uh, uh, environment or the society of uh, Kashmir is concerned. But, uh, uh, you know, these are, th th some of them are uh, 
are just contract killers. It is more of a criminal activity than uh, related to terrorism. So it is a law and order also, you know, which comes into play in a great way. And that is where we, along with the uh, Jammu and Kashmir police and the other agencies which are involved in the security uh, paradigm of this uh, state, we are collectively working. So while these events also are far and few, it mm. is not that they are very rampant, you know. Mm. Over the years, these figures have also come down uh, drastically, but uh, a lot still needs to be done. So that is where our domination, our operations are currently focused. And I'm sure in times to come, in quick time, we'll be able to take stock as well as eliminate uh, these uh, elements for sure. Sir, uh, we have been seeing line of control quite active when it comes to narco-terrorism. First, I would like to know your views. The other thing is we are seeing that the Pakistan terrorists trying to infiltrate into Kashmir despite the ceasefire agreement. How do you see this narco-terrorism and then trying to infiltrate when uh, ceasefire agreement is in place? Okay. So, uh, while many things are good when it comes to the ceasefire agreement, but uh, as far as uh, the intent per se in infiltrating terrorists from the other side, uh, that definitely has uh, not gone down. Wherever he gets an opportunity, he does make an attempt, he does make an endeavor. And uh, at all times, uh, the uh, probability factor from his side is that in case he could uh, sneak in uh, some mm. people. So, uh, like I mentioned before, we are pretty robust, we are pretty strong on ground, both in terms of the feet that we have, plus the technology that we have uh, put across. So, I'm pretty confident uh, that uh, it's not an easy way that you can infiltrate at least in 15 core. That is point number one. When it comes to narco-terrorism per se, yeah, it is a major concern because uh, this is a new phenomena, you know, which over the last few years is gaining a little bit of attraction. Not only are the youth uh, induced into it, it is funding the, uh, or it is, you know, uh, going about doing the terror financing uh, part also. So that is something which we want to check and we want to check in a big way. And uh, today, as we speak, I think uh, multi-agency and uh, the entire UT administration is sensitive to this particular facet. And uh, very shortly, you will see a new kind of a methodology being put into place where we can cut or capture this kind of a trend and bring it down to the barest minimum. Sir, is there a change in policy when we talk about managing LOC post after a ceasefire agreement? Yeah, negative, negative. We have, uh, we are maintaining our stance in the similar manner because the intent from the other side hasn't changed and uh, there's no reason for us, you know, to change our stance. So uh, that uh, business goes about uh, as usual. So what's we, the we just can't afford to, you know, let even a single uh, terrorist uh, from the other side uh, enter Kashmir. That is just okay. not acceptable and uh, I can assure you uh, to the very last bit uh, that we, the effort that we put on ground, we'll ensure that nobody, you know, uh, comes inside. What is the status of terrorism in the Kashmir and the trend of locals joining the terror ranks? Uh, 2023 per se, a mm -hmm. lot of positives. We've seen, uh, again, in the first five months of the year, the lowest amount of recruitment that has taken place. Of course, there are remnants of terrorism which are still there, but again, the numbers are you know, uh, at the very uh, lowest that we've seen over the last 34 years. So that is something which is uh, uh, a good thing which has happened on ground. And, uh, but uh, still, still uh, the focus is uh, to ensure that even the last man uh, which is there, which is existing, is taken care of. Since you talked about the improvement in the situation in the Kashmir Valley, do you foresee the reduction of troops on the ground? Mm, at this point of time, I think uh, uh, the situation still demands that uh, we keep our uh, presence, we keep our uh, you know visibility, and we have our signatures in the rightful manner at all the right places. So. Uh, if I have to just answer the uh, question per se, I think we can take a little more time. Let's be deliberate in uh, doing uh, every action that we do. We've come a long way over the last 34 years in achieving this. Yeah. The major challenge for me today is to sustain this. Yes. Is to ensure that 
the last terrorist on ground is also taken care of. So till then, my focus is absolutely uh, what we've come here for. Once that is taken care of, I'm sure we'll take a call. Lot of buzz when it comes to Amarnath Yatra, since army is a big component when it comes to safety and security of Yatris. How is army preparing this time when state, the Union territory is expecting huge number of pilgrims? So we'll deliver. We'll deliver like uh, what we've been doing uh, over the last so many years. Last year was a threshold year and uh, I think uh, the Yatra went off uh, pretty comfortably, pretty peacefully, other than that natural calamity of course that took place. But nonetheless, the lessons of all these years that we've uh, put our effort uh, on ground, so this year also remains the same for us. Yeah, we'll be more cautious, we'll be more alert and uh, whatever task uh, that has been assigned to Army, we'll do to our fullest uh, best. So. At this point of time, I am not uh, worried or I am not concerned uh, so as to say because I am pretty confident of the capacity and the capability of the army and not only army, of every agency that is operating uh, in uh, JNK. And uh, you know, the, it is a team uh, JNK effort that gets translated whenever such an event uh, comes up. So whether it was G20, whether it is Amarnath Yatra, or uh, at a later stage, any other event that uh, you know has to take place uh, in the Kashmir Valley, uh, I think collectively we will uh, deliver. And I'm pretty confident that uh, we'll deliver and we'll deliver it uh, uh, in the best possible manner. Sir, we have seen that uh, online bloggers time and again, they push for online threats the issue the posters and other things be it the yatra or the once the migrant colonies were uh, inaugurated by the uh, honorable lg we see these kind of threats coming so how do you see the pattern of online threats coming from the terror offers so, for operating yeah. across so these are pressure tactics these are pressure tactics and uh, you know it is the social media actually which uh, today uh, runs the rate on many uh, aspects and uh, these are the uh, then uh, the avenues and the options which are there with them to influence the people, which otherwise is you know slowly slowly diminishing. So these are efforts from their side to prop up their agendas, to uh, you know uh, do a certain amount of propaganda, to throw out their narratives and their themes. Uh, but uh, I can assure you that uh, while these things are on the rise and these things are happening on ground, we are cognizant of uh, such activities taking place. But at the same time, I must assure you that uh, the general public is not getting or not getting aligned or not getting influenced uh, in the manner that they feel that they want to you know, uh, put things across. So the people have understood their, uh, what has been their uh, designs and uh, they've also understood as to what is good and what is bad for them. So they are able to take that rightful decision. And that is why I said that the sentiments of the local population in Kashmir today is changing and it is changing for the good. So while uh, you know these uh, issues are also to be taken into account and we have to put a certain amount of check and certain amount of curbs and we have to be you know wary of these, but at the same time, it is not impacting or affecting in uh, the manner that possibly they thought that they would be able to do it. I think our good work on ground is what is showing the results. And I'm pretty happy with that. And ISIA and other agencies oh, they're doing conducting a marvelous job. raids, confiscating, yeah. seizing of yes, properties. Yes, yes. How help it was to the forces who were working for anti-terror operations or trying to take this or weed out the terror from this valley? So it was a collective effort that has been put into place. So it's every agency that is working in absolute synergy on the valley floor, which is uh, coming together and which is delivering. So these are also you know facets which are associated, whether it is NIA or the SIA, along with the army, along with CRPF, BSF, JNK police is playing a major role. The developmental work done by uh, the UT administration that is you know uh, now uh, showing uh, the effect on ground. People are getting more and more confident and they are, uh, their trust and faith with the agencies, with the governance is increasing. The emotional and the intellect connect 
between the um, governing bodies and the agencies who are operating on the valley floor with the population that is also you know uh, increasing and showing signs of positivity so it's a collective effort so every agency puts in in the manner that he's uh, supposed to and uh, the results are there uh, for everyone to see not only within kashmir but for the entire country and for the entire globe lieutenant general amardeep singh ajla thank you so much for talking to the public